good morning class 11a this is miss seshwa again video number 6 part 2 the subtopic is the gas exchange system the references are in the course book page 177 to 180 let us continue in part 1 we have learned that a capillary network that means the capillary system that wraps around the cluster of alveoli and the each capillary is connected to a branch of the pulmonary artery and is drained by the branch of pulmonary vein and the pulmonary circulation is supplied with deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart and oxygenated blood is returned to the left side of the heart to be pumped to the rest of the body so there are some 700 million alveoli in our lungs that are providing a surface area of about 70 meter square in total so that means it is the area for 30 to 40 times greater than that of the body's external skin well the wall of an alveolus is formed by pavement epithelium that is about 1 cell thick this is an epithelium is a sheet of cells bound strongly together covering internal and also external surfaces of multicellular organisms that are lying very close is very close and also for a that is a capillary it wall its walls also just a single flattened that is endothelium that is also about one cell thick if we combine the thickness of walls separating air and blood is typically about 2 to 4 micrometers thick the capillaries are extremely narrow but just wide enough for red blood cells to squeeze through so here the red blood cells are close to or in the contact with the capillary walls if we see the photo micrograph of transverse section of alveoli you can be looking like this so here the extremely delicate structure of the alveoli is protected by two types of cells that are abundance in the surface film of moisture that are nothing but macrophages and surfactant cells here you can see this is the surfactant cell and <coughs> here duct cells these are nothing but micro phases first let us talk about the duct cell the dust cells that are nothing but macro phases these are the cells originate from the bone marrow stem cells and the uh, and are dispersed about the body in the blood circulation so the function of the dust cells are <clears throat> this is the dust cell the function of this dust cell is about mainly the detritus collecting cells of the body so these amoeboid cells you can see the structure here you can see it's look like a amoeba so we can say these are the amoeboid cells migrate into the alveoli from the capillaries from the capillaries this will be entering into the blood and here these phagocytic white blood cells ingest any debris fine dust particles bacteria and fungal spores also present in it they also occur lining the surfaces of the airways leading to the alveoli so here you can see the dust cell present in the 
body that is coming into the surface of the wall of the surface of the alveolus and then it will be transferred into the cap into the blood cells that are present in the capillaries okay so from the capillaries it will be entering into the blood like that and the next one is surfactant cells these are the surfactant cells while the lungs are alternately stretch and deflat in the breathing process that time the surfactant cell that keeps the alveolus walls flexible by the secretion of phospholipid in it okay these surfactant cells produce a detergent like mixture of lipoproteins and phospholipid rich secretion that line the inner surface of the alveolar okay so this lung surfactant lowers surface tension permitting the alveoli to flex easily as the pressure of the thorax falls and rises by this it reduces the tendency of alveoli to collapse and expiration so the blood that is arriving into the lungs is having low in oxygen okay so that the blood we have in the lungs that is coming into the lungs is having low oxygen when compared to the alveolar air but high in carbon dioxide as blood flows past the alveoli gaseous exchange occurs by diffusion so oxygen dissolves in the surface film of water diffuses across into the blood plasma and into the red blood cells where it combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin hemoglobin at the same time carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveolus okay in the picture you can see here is the surface film of water here from here you can see the blood that is coming into the lungs is having a low oxygen than the carbon dioxide when compared to the air that is in the alveol so oxygen diffuses in the surface film of water and diffuses across into the blood plasma and into the red blood cells where it combines with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin is that clear consequently there is a residual volume of air that cannot be expelled in the mammals because air flows in the lungs of the mammals is tidal is that in that air enters and leaves by the same route so incoming air mixes with and dilutes the residual air the effect of this is that air in the alveoli contains significantly less oxygen than the atmosphere outside nevertheless the lungs are efficient organs of gaseous exchange so by this we can understand that gas exchange is the exchange of respiratory gases that are oxygen and carbon dioxide between cells of an organism and the environment isn't it this is the gas exchange between the cells organism and cells of the organism and the environment but the cellular respiration is the process by which sugars and other substances are broken down into release chemical energy for other cellular processes okay so gas exchange is a consequence of cellular respiration isn't it so the gas exchange is a process for the organism cell of the organism and environment in between that two and 
the respiration the cellular respiration is the substance that broken down to release chemical energy okay so here the oxygen mixing into the blood to form react with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin that is the cellular respiration now time to take down the notes here you have the notes open the notebook and copy down all this along with the pictures so here you have a gas inspired air expired air explanation you can see this is the composition of air in the lungs the nitrogen is of 79% inspired and also 79% expired this is produced by body processes or not used okay so oxygen is 21% inhaled and 16% exhaled used up in respiration and the carbon dioxide is about 0.04% of inspiration and 4% in expiration that is produced in the respiration so water vapor it is a variable and the expiration the expiration is saturated so here the explanation for the water vapor is produced by respiration moisture evaporates from surface of alveoli so as we know the air is a mixture of gases so each component gas exerts a partial pressure of proportion to how much it is present so the partial pressure of oxygen will be written as a po2 here in the formula you can see po2 so in the air at the sea level you can see the partial pressure of oxygen equal like this we can write so 101.3 this 101.3 is the atmospheric pressure of oxygen that is in kilopascals okay so that is divided by <coughs> 100 and multiplied with 20 that we have taken from the inspire inspired air <coughs> 20% of air 20% of oxygen we are taking from the air when we inspire that means inspiration so the total will be 20.3 kilopascals so in the alveolus if we see pressure partial pressure of oxygen equal at the sea level oxygen is 101.3 divided by 100 multiply with 14 because 14 times 14% we will have when we uh, when we compared to the alveolar air in the alveolar air we have 14% of oxygen so we take in here so uh, the answer is 14.2 kilopascals like this we will find the oxygen percent in the at the sea level and also in the alveolus okay so take this also in the notebook and that's all for today see you in the next video have a nice day thank you